Hey guys and gals, Derry here from Drake Queen Game, and suddenly now toward the gaming dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Mice Tees, Sylvia's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> well, we don't have passes, so we can't go on the floor, but I did see they had a little performing areas in some of the halls and lobbies, like sort of a busking thing. Hopefully there's an open spot, and hopefully you don't mind me wheeling me around. Of course not. Your faithful chariot is at your service. I grasp the handle of the center cart and push forward. Sylvia keeps waving like she's a beauty queen on a float. We pass one performance area with a hedgehog playing a ukulele and another where a herd of huskies perform a mime routine before we find an open spot. The hastily drawn poster board sign which scrawled with a marker is taped onto the wall and Sylvia slides off the carts. She pulls her tail, with, tail off with her hands as though she can't move it on her own. We take a blanket we'd brought from the bookstore, lost and found, and sling it over the cart for a makeshift curtain. Our preparations are complete. We stand there for a moment. So, uh, how do we get people to stop by? Oh, I guess it's not super obvious what we're offering, huh? I might try drumming up some interest, sort of do the carnival barker thing. If you think that will work. She moves to one side so any hypnotee could stand behind it in relative privacy. I take a step into the hall and open my mouth. Three seconds later, I shut it tight. Crap, I don't know what to say. With so many people wearing masks, it's hard to catch people's eyes. Even when I do, I always break eye contact first. Hey, everyone, come see Madame Nagalowski, Mistress of the Hypnotic Arts. No one stops. Ease your troubles with the genuine mind-altering powers of my girlfriend, who is a snake. A passerby stops to snap a photo of Sylvie and continues on their way. Riveting stuff. I don't know, I don't have any experience with this. That last thing we did I could handle. I know about fantasy books and customer service, but this is all new. But you were doing so well before. And this is the perfect time to get outside your comfort zone. Most of these people are from out of town, and you're hardly recognizable. I survey the crowd, and I'm even more daunted than before. Yeah, but I still need to do it. Let me give you a little nudge, then. A rush of ice water in my blood makes me shiver to attention. Oh, that's just lovely. Now, where was... I clamped down on the sensation inside me. What was that? It just gave me a little boost before you start. But you can't take over if I don't ask. I wasn't taking over. I was just lending you some of my essence. You get to use it however you see fit. Uh, sweetie, what's going on? Oh, uh, Peggy and I were going over what to do. Oh, well, whatever you two think you're capable of. Yes, what do you think you're capable of? What are you going to give yourself permission to do? I close my eyes and inhale. Give it to me. The same brisk energy fills me and I feel a foot taller. My posture seems to change of its own accord to match Peggy's more assertive stance. Meanwhile, my thoughts are a whirlwind of possibilities filled with recollections of of loquacious pitchmen bursting with authority and bravado. I can suddenly think of dozens of ways to attract attention to our makeshift booth. What's more is they all seem fun. Hmm. Alrighty. Any thought that something could possibly go wrong is swiftly nudged aside. It doesn't take long for everything to settle into place. Yeah, yes, what these people need is a show. Come on, come on, to witness the amazing mentalist feats of Madame Nagalaski. Nagalaski performing wondrous acts of hypnotism and a limited engagement at the new Greenshire Convention Center. No ailment too petty to be rehabilitated. No secret too obscure to be extracted under the magical influence of this serpentine beauty. The words spill out of me so fast it's hard to keep up, but I... Tr but I charge ahead with my voice. A few people slow on their paths. Any mental malady medicated in moments, and all you must do is stare into the piercing eyes of this lovely Limea. A few people are intrigued enough to stop. My chest flashes with heat as I meet the eyes of one passerby. He isn't any taller than most guys I know, but my nerves resurface and I make him tower over me. I must shrink back down to my normal posture, but another dose of Peggy quells any doubts. You, sir! What condition can our coiled cutie cure for you this evening? Uh, me? No, the other gentleman in the two-foot-tall rabbit he is. A few of his friends snicker. He fails to tamp, he fails to tamp down on a nervous smile. Oh, uh, nothing really. Nothing, you say? I didn't know we had the most well-adjusted man in America attending the convention. Maybe you should be the one on display. Well, I mean, nothing major, I guess. I scan his face for what nothing major could mean. The bags under his eyes make for an easy diagnosis. Even the smallest, simplest afflictions are fair game for the benevolent Madame Nagalowski. A vocal tick, a nasty habit, and perhaps even trouble sleeping. His eyes light up, and I receive a rush of endorphins at guessing right. 
Oh, um, I guess it can take a while to get to bed. I see that scar on his face, too. Huh. Excellent. Why don't we let some hypnotism feature hap hypnagogic ales? Or hypnagogic. Hypnagogic ales. Sylvia, we have our first one participant this evening. Care to assist him? Sure thing, Margaret. She reaches out a hand to take his. He's surprised to be referred to as willing, but the chance to hold Sylvia's hand is a lot to convince him. Now that someone's gone behind the curtain, the, the growing crowd sees us as a serious endeavor. And I'm chasing the high of recruiting more participants. The fact I'm helping them just makes me more eager. Who else could use some assistance from our charm and hypnotist? Uh, she have anything to fear? Uh, she have anything for fear of public? Sp oh, does she have anything for fear of public speaking? The woman who'd spoken up obscures herself behind her boyfriend. Public speaking? Did I hear pub? Did public hear that correctly? She giggles and nods. Well, that's a specialty of Madame Nagalowski. Would you believe I was once a mousy young woman who couldn't speak above a squeak? And I do literally mean mousy. I tug on one ear as the crowd titters. Now, with the confidence imbued in me, I'm able to address all you fine furries with exacting elocution. Alright, I'm gonna. Let's let you know. Water time. Alright, guys and gals, and we are back. Okay. Small hiccup makes me realize just how true everything I've just said is. The distance between between what I'm doing right now and what I've been four days ago makes me lose a step. Another serving of Peggy's poise allows me to regain the beat. Who knows what she'll be able to do for you, especially when she, especially when you so charming when you appear so charming already. She buries her face in her boyfriend's shoulder. He nudges her toward the curtain, and she forms the first person in the queue. Wait a second. Is that the guy from um? Coffee buns? I bet it is. I think it is. Very similar looking face. Oh wait, no. I don't think the other guy had crutches. Okay. So yeah, might be a different person. Make sure to get in line while it's still short, everyone. Spots are sure to fill up fast. I continue to hawk for Sylvia as the evening wears on. It's easier once a healthy line forms and anyone passing by can see something's happening. Some people have actual issues they want to work on, while some want an excuse to look into the eyes of a beautiful woman who's half snake. All of them come out from behind the curtain amazed at what Sylvia's done for them. Some of them thank me directly. Some of them simply rave to their friends who then get in line themselves. It isn't long before half the people in line have been referred by previous participants. After a while, I don't need to convince anyone to jump in the queue. I work the line instead of by keeping the attendees engaged and asking questions to pass on to Sylvia before their sessions. Sylvia has an even higher demand for photographs whenever she, whenever she finishes with someone. She has to limit herself to two photo ops between each sitting. I keep the would-be photograph photographer's company in the meantime and act as a subject for them as well. My skill at flashing just enough fame grows more owned with each hour. Long into the night we continue, past the time the exhibition halls close and most of the attendees retire to their hotel rooms. Sylvia simply has an inexhaustible capacity to help, but I have an insatiable appetite for attention. It's the most exhilarating night I've had in ages. Day six. Limited engagement. Ding ding da ba da ba da ba da. My eyes open in a blurry haze as I try to figure out if my phone's receiving a call or just waking me up with my alarm. Is that the fucking? Is that the fucking like gray frog or whatever the hell he was? It's definitely too early for it to be either. I stumble out of bed. My phone's not going to stop until I do something about it, and so I fumble with the screen until I swipe the right... Uh, what? Does that... Is there a brand out there called iCheese? What? I'm so confused, iSwiss? No, I'm so confused now. My phone's not gonna stop until I do something about it, so I fumble with the screen until the, until I swipe the right the right way. Yeah. Hi, Margaret. You there? Sort of. Did you just wake up or something? Of course I did. What what time is it anyway? Margaret, it's 8 a.m. I take the, I take the time to look at the clock in the corner of my screen. It is? Yeah, I've been talking with the con organizers for a while already. I'm now awake enough to notice the light peeking in through my blackout curtains. Crap! I didn't realize it was that late. Yeah, aren't you usually good at getting to work on time? 
<sighs> I'm not used to late nights. And it's not like I have to get up for anything. We don't... Another level of wakefulness allows me to comprehend something she just said. Wait, you were talking to the convention organizers? Yeah, I got the number of one of them last night. They want to know if we'd like to work in a more official capacity. Really? Yeah, they've got like a mental health section of the con. Like a corner where you go but to be somewhere quiet and sometimes they have a yoga class or something. Anyway, they want to give us some passes and set up a booth for us so we can do the sessions with a little more privacy and be in the actual convention space too. I think we might have been blocking the hallway through line a little bit last night. Oh, wow, that's a lot. I mean, two free passes to a furry convention aren't quite the incentive they probably think it is. But it's exciting that they want us to keep doing it. I assume you want to take them up on the offer? For sure. You saw how they were with, you saw that there were still people in line when we finished, right? And I bet a lot of people only heard about us overnight. I'm sure there's a lot more people I could help at the con. <laughs> that's what I thought that's what I thought you'd say. Well, I guess I still have the day off if you want me to tag along. Oh come on, Margaret, you know I can't do this without you. That's a very charitable appraisal of my role in all this, but I'll take you up on it. I should I meet you at the con or do you want me to pick you up? You can meet me there. I'll probably meditate back and drink more of the tea at the convention center. Maybe I'll bring a bunch of boxes and pretend my costume is inside them. There, uh, is one thing I was gonna ask. What's that? I got up early enough to, well, experiment with the tea. I was curious about how far I could take the transformation, so I had more even though I woke up snaky. Remained silent for a few seconds. Sylvia, do you still have your arms? Yes, Margaret, I still have my arms. Okay, at least you didn't go that far. How would I even be using my phone? I don't know, you have the tip of your tail. And we both know your tongue's pretty dexterous. I can't tell if I hear a sigh on the other side of the phone or not. Anyway, I got scales all over and a snake mouth or nose? What would you call that? Uh, a snout? Yeah, exactly. It's really wild. It really completes the whole look. I think we'd probably fit in with the aesthetic of the con this way. The full body costume seem, costumes seem to be the top of the line stuff. I'm going to put on my magician outfit too. I figured we'd want to play up the showmanship angle if they put us up in an actual booth or stage or whatever. Oh, um, that's sort of a lot to ask so early. Yeah, I know. No big deal if you'd rather not. You were so cute the way you were last night. I shuffle my feet for a few moments. Take it now. Water time. Um, mind if I talk with Peggy a bit? Oh, sure, I'll wait. I turn my attention away from the phone and inward instead. Uh, I have a feeling I know your thoughts on the si on the idea. You mean I do have the dress and shoes? You mean I do have the dress and shoes picked out already? Yes, I do. Is it gonna be as revealing as I think it is? Don't worry, you'll hardly be showing any skin at all. The fur will make sure sure of that. <laughs> I wince. I thought you were trying to convince me to do it. Margaret, when have I ever led you wrong? I guess it depends on what's leading and what's taking over. Sweetie Pumpkin Bubblegum, has any new thing we've tried not been an absolute delight? If I went back in time and made you miss anything from these past few days, would you ever forgive me? I imagine the possibility of missing out on all the things that made the past week so exhilarating. Oh, I guess I would have hated to miss those. Well, this is the biggest ass silly or silly or I've made of you. Don't you imagine it could be the biggest reward you've received yet? My stomach fills with butterflies and what could potentially happen if I step off that ledge. Um, I suppose. It's settled then. She thinks it before I can. Hey, Sylvia? Yeah? Tell me where to pick up my pass and get ready for the cutest thing you've seen me in yet. Oh boy. Vroom vroom! Oh my god. Jesus Christ, girl. Huh. I arrived at the con after a swift car ride courtesy of Sylvia. Swift in comparison to my usual commute, at least. There's no way I was going to ride the train into town like this. It was daunting enough sitting in the back of the luxury car the whole time. Thank you for letting me out let me out for the car ride, dearest. Well, I figured you'd be more comfortable in that situation, and I imagine it'll be up front at least once a day. It'll be easier than giving you a big chunk of time once a week. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can, it always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier anyway. If y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!